All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Razia Usman live from Daejeon, South Korea. Today, we're going to have an exclusive webinar on culinary arts with Chef James and his sous chef and our former proud alumni sous chef. So we're going to wait a little bit until all of you can come here. We have more people joining. While we're doing that, how about you, the ones who are already studying here, drop us names and where you're from and why you're here. So names and country. Just to let you know that this webinar is open to public, free of charge, and open to anyone globally. To give you a little bit of a background, we are Wusong University and Wusong University's flagship program is culinary arts. We do have culinary arts on the bachelor level as well as, well as associate degrees. So if you're here because you're looking forward to have opportunity studying at Wusong University, sticking around and asking questions later is definitely part of today's session. So if you have particular questions, just throw it by in the chat box, run it there. Or later on in a Q&A, you can always ask us questions. Anyway, so we're gonna wait until a lot of more people coming in. Remember, if you're listening to this, please stop by and write in the chat about your name, where you're from, country, city, and why you wanna study culinary arts, and so on and so forth. So again, my name is Razia Usman from International Relations of Usong University, and this is Chefs. James, James. <laughs> yes, James. <laughs> and with the sous chef too. <laughs> now, uh, while we're waiting, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, South Korea and your opportunities coming here. So Usung University is one of the largest universities when it comes to international students' populations. And culinary arts has roughly about 3,000 students and today we're so lucky that we're here with Professor James, who also been part of Usong's culinary arts program growth. Is that right? Yes, exactly. How many years you've been here? Uh, over 20. 20 years. Did you hear that? 20 years and loving it. 20 years and loving it. If he yeah. loves it in South Korea, you could do it too. So uh, where are you from, Professor James? Well, actually, uh, I'm from San Francisco, California. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on the West Coast of the United States in California. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, it's a melting pot, so uh, I, I love my hometown because of the fact that uh, it has uh, all nations in one city, so there's a lot of diversity, so I'm very glad and very happy to grow up in a place like San Francisco. Right, and how does it feel teaching for Wusong? You have quite a diverse cohort of students to teach, right? Yes, exactly. So we have uh, students from all over the world and uh, from different ethnic groups and mm -hmm. uh, different religions and, and it's just amazing to have uh, a diverse student, how do you say? Um, different nationalities. Nationalities together. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a learning experience for me as well as a student. Right, now using what Professor James just told you, it is correct that Busan University represents 60 plus different nationalities when it comes to it student body. And for a good example, we'll turn around to Malaysia and probably you can tell us a little bit, when did you arrive in South Korea and started studying at uh, Wusong University? I started at two, uh, 2016. 2016? It's been here for already five years. Five years, five good years. Yes, yes. And right now you are in the graduate program of yes. Wusong University, right? Yes, correct. So that's great. So that's um, that's how Wusong University is actually home to a lot of international students and hopefully it's your future home too. So to those of you who are here, hi, hi, thank you for joining. Again, if you are joining us today, please write down your name uh, in the chat box and tell us where you are from and why you are here. Just a little reminder, we're gonna wait a little bit more minutes until a lot of people are joining. Today, we're gonna to have a culinary arts webinar with Professor James and sous chef Chun from Malaysia. So um, welcome one more time. We're also gonna have a little bit of discussion on how to join Utong University as a student a bit later. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on a few things that Chef James and sous chef Chun are gonna cook. So, Professor James, 
Why yeah. don't you tell us a little bit what about um, all the stuff that we're going to cook today? Well, the menu uh, that we're going to be doing today, we're going to do four four menu items. We're going to do two <laughs> starters. So starters will be the beginning of the meal. So the starters will be, of course, seasonal. So as you know, this is winter. So all the ingredients that we're using is usually winter ingredients. So it's seasonal ingredients. So we're going to be doing a pumpkin soup. And we're going to be doing a winter salad. So I hope you enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing also today, we're going to be doing two main courses. We're going to do one fish dish, which is a sea bass. Okay. And we're going to be doing one meat dish, which is a beef tenderloin. Correct. So if those of you, uh, you know, here and watching that all these things that get cooked, be prepared to salivate along the way. But at the same time, you'll get to see how Chef James and Chu Chef Shun in action. Now, additionally, I have to let you know that Professor James is uh, the boss of Soul Pine Restaurant. <laughs> Soul Pine Restaurant is on campus restaurant located at Usong University and focusing on gourmet food, international gourmet food. Am I correct? International, yes. Yes, indeed. So um, the menu changes every two months. Am yeah, I every, yeah, every two months, uh, every two, two and a half to three months. But so we'll just say two to three months. So okay. seasonal menu. Sure, sure. So because Wusong University is very strong in the culinary arts program, we have multiple food joints on campus, including Soul Pine, held by Professor James. Now, um, are we ready to have, are we getting a lot of people coming in? Yes. Okay, good, good. So to those of you who just joined, hi from South Korea. Again, my name is Razia Usman. I'm going to be here and uh, explain later on about how to get to Usong University and join culinary arts program. But today I'm going to share the screen and hand it over to Professor James and Su Chef Chun, because today they're going to be cooking multiple things, two entrees. And two main courses, am I correct? Uh, two, two starters. Oh, two starters, my apologies. So, yeah, two we're going to be doing two starters and two main. And two main. So uh, you're also going to be able to see what kind of skills do you need to be to arrive at this point. And we're going to have a little bit of discussion, how long you can study here, how to get here, and so on and so forth. So enjoy this webinar. Please don't forget to write down all your questions in the Q&A, and we'll address it later. Go ahead, Professor James, and to Chef Chu. Thank you. Uh, again, I would like to welcome all of you to our webinar. And uh, again, my name is uh, Professor James, or Chef James. And again, you can go and introduce yourself. My name is Chun. So I'm studying in Wilson University, Department of the Culinary Arts. So and, uh, I'm very glad I'm joining this uh, webinar. Yeah, webinar. OK, so let me drop here. So today, what we're going to be doing first is we are preparing our winter salad. So this winter salad is actually what we teach here in the restaurant. So this is actually one of the dishes that we actually serve at the moment on our menu. So as well as myself and Su Chef Chun, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and, and, and start this uh, salad. So the first thing uh, we are putting on the plate is a very nice uh, radicchio. So this has been soaking in the ice water to refresh them. So now I will start the plate. And I wanna go over all the ingredients. So first of all, quickly, let's go over. We have radicchio, we have our pickled onions, we have cherry tomatoes. And if you like the recipe, we can actually uh, see if we can actually list the recipe for you online. We have our candied walnuts, apple, we have our uh, mango grapes. We have a few crouton. We have three crouton. We have a prosciutto or fama ham. A little bit of frise. A little bit of frise and uh, arugula with some Belgian endive. And what is this again? Baby sorrel. Baby sorrel. And we have a nice goat cheese mousse. So the salad that we're doing now is uh, actually a composed salad. So it's, it's semi-composed, meaning uh, there's a little preparation that we do first. So we, we plate it halfway, and then we finish, finish pre-plating. We pre-plate and finish plating when we get an order. The vinaigrettes that we are using today, we have uh, lemon vinaigrette, sherry vinaigrette, 
we're going to be using a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and also Himalayan pink salt. So the next endive I'm putting on is a endive. Beautiful. And very important also, you don't, you want it to look a little natural. You don't want all the salads to look the same. For me, I don't like everything to look identical. I like each salad, even though it's the same salad, to look a little bit slightly different. Okay. So next, I have a cherry tomato. I'm going to marinate it with some of the lemon vinaigrette and soy and peppers. And the next will be the grapes. Now, if, you, if you're noticing the ingredients, we're trying to hit every palate level of taste. So we have a little sweet, we have a little bitter, we have saltiness, uh, we have a little bit of savory as well. And also a little bit small details when we do plating, we try to let the stem part of the cherry tomatoes and the grapes is facing inside, mm -hmm. so it looks more beautiful. So the next thing I'm putting on is the candy walnut that we make uh, ahead of time. Looks good, sous chef. Thank you. So there will be a next thing. It will be our arugula and also a little bit of the freezes. We are going to put it on. And also, I would like to mention, we're wearing gloves. Now, it's very important, especially if you're cooking or making anything that is to be eaten raw, not cooked as a salad, it's very important to always use gloves. That's to prevent any foodborne illness. Um, changing gloves is also very important. It's, it's useless if you wear gloves and start touching other utensils and equipment. So when you're wearing gloves, make sure you focus on what you're doing and cooking. Looks good. Very nice. Next thing I'm going to put on is the prosciutto. So I just need to put it right, very natural. So I don't want to overfolding them. Want a little bit height, a little bit height. Kind of want to wrinkle it up just a little bit. Stand it up a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to put is my apples. And what did you do with the apples to prevent it from oxidizing? Uh, actually, I put a little bit of the lemon juice and water. I suck it in for two minutes, then I take it off. Now, why is that important? Uh, because it prevents the oxidize. So Oxidation. It prevents the, prevent the apples to turn color. So it, but same thing like potato. Potatoes, if you cut potatoes, they turn to oxidize and turn brown. So you keep them in the water. For apples, you place a little lemon juice to keep them from also turning brown. Now, if you notice, we're tucking the apples under the salad. So you wanna be able to see all the ingredients. You wanna be able to see everything. This is art. So this is art on a plate. So your plate is the canvas. So you wanna be able to see all the textures. You wanna see the colors. Uh, you wanna be able to see everything that you put on the plate. The next, I will put on the crouton. Very nice. Okay. I'll do this one. So here, also in contrast, we need a little acid in the plates because you want that little acidic to bring out all the other flavors of the sweetness and the salt. Okay. So while we're here, we have pickled. Uh, onions. So you have a little pickle here. I'm going to add that. So right now I'm going to be putting on the goat cheese mousse. So you want to use a uh, a piping bag. Of course, you want to keep this refrigerated. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put little dollops in the middle and on the side.
Okay. And on top of that, we're going to place baby Sorel. So go and cut that top off. Yeah, so you're going to snip, yeah, snip off the top. Beautiful. Yeah, sous chef must have had a good teacher. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yes, you <laughs> I'm going to put on the pickle onions. And look at the contrast of the color. I mean, this is winter on a plate. That's beautiful. That's enough. It's very nice color. Now, very last, very last, you want to put the vinaigrette and you want to put the oils. You don't want to do this too fast or too soon. Uh, because of the vegetables, they will, they will be saturated with vinaigrette and dye. Yeah, I'm going to important. put a little bit of the Himalayan salt. And then again, pepper will be offered at the table. A little bit of the extra virgin olive oil. A little bit more. Very nice. A little bit of the lemon vinaigrette. I think that's going to be house vinaigrette pretty soon, right? Use it for everything. Yes. And also the last bit of sherry vinegar. So when you put the vinaigrette as well, you don't want to cover all the vinaigrette in one place. You want to put spots of the vinaigrette. So each bite that you take, you get a little bit of the lemon. You get a little bit of the sherry uh, individually. So that's it. So look at this beautiful, wonderful salad here. So I don't know if you can see that, but this is absolutely, this is absolutely beautiful. So uh, the flavor profile, I wish you could taste this. The flavor profile is it's very important to taste all the ingredients that you put on the, uh, the, the starter. It's very light. It's not so heavy. Um, I don't know. What do you think about the salad? I like it a lot. I like the flavors. It has sour, sweetness, yeah. bitterness. Oh, it's very balanced. Savory. Yeah. You got the savoriness yes. of the ham. Um, also, the reason why we add the ham last is, well, we also have uh, our, our, our Muslim clientele. So if you choose not to have ham, we can just take it right off or we can leave it out. So this is why we don't really add it and mix it together. That's why it's semi-composed. That's very nice. So that is one of our starters. So we're gonna start working on our next starter, which is our pumpkin soup. This is also seasonal. And yes, so we're gonna put this on the side. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the pumpkin. The pumpkin soup, what we do, a lot of chefs um, actually dice the pumpkin in the mirepoix, which is the trinity, which is the mirepoix is uh, carrot, celery, onions. Um, and also the pumpkin. So what we do instead of dicing that and sweating the, uh, the pumpkin and the mirepoix, what we do is we roast the pumpkin. Now what this does is the pumpkin, when you roast it in the oven with a little bit of uh, butter, salt and pepper, it just brings out more of the sweetness of the pumpkin and the taste is just elevated, I would say more than 10 times. So there's a different flavor profile. So the, uh, the pumpkin soup is already made, basically. So um, the classification of this soup would be a puree soap, puree soup. So you would have mirepoix, or you would have chicken stock or vegetable stock if you like this vegetarian. Um, if you like it vegetarian, you can leave out the cream as well. So we have cream. Um, and we have a little bit of flour for the roux as a thickener. The garnish that we're using as well, we have smoked bacon. It's a bacon we usually smoke ourselves. We make ourselves. And we have, of course, pumpkin soup. We have pumpkin seeds. We have uh, croutons again for texture. We have our fresh herbs, very important for the freshness. We have uh, fresh chives. And here we have Maple cream, so yes, um, very nice. So of course, this is a maple syrup from Canada, of course. Yeah. 
And uh, this goes very good with pumpkin. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna heat this up. And very important, hot food, hot plates. So this bowl is actually quite hot. Uh, we can't take the warmer. And uh, so our salad, of course, cold foods, cold plates. So what we did here, we just had a little bit of cream. Again, if you are vegetarian, you can leave the cream out and you can, instead of chicken stock, what you can do is you can use veg stock or even water. And here in, uh, in the university and so fine kitchen here, what we do is we cook everything to order. Even the soup is chilled and we heat it to order. Furthermore, Soups, you start learning the basic soups the first year of school. Probably the first semester as well. Same with the solids as well. That's what you learn, isn't it? Yes, you learn it. So we can see that the soup is just nice and beautiful. It's up to a boil. But you want it really hot. I don't want to say my joke. But, uh, And what we serve here, we do uh, depending, okay? So depending on how many courses you have, depends on the amount of soup. So if you have a five to seven course, we give you about 120 milliliter. If you're having a three course, we give you, of course, you get up to 250 mil. And so fine, we, we do between 180 to 200 mil. So you wanna hold the uh, ladle like a pencil. Very important. So we call this a lion head bowl, of course, because it has lion heads on both sides. And it's very classic French and it's very elegant. So what we're gonna do now, first we're gonna go ahead and get, grab our maple cream. Place that right on top. So remember, this is like a canvas. You eat not only with your mouth, you eat with your eyes and, and, and also the smell and the aroma. So these things are very, these are all very important. So we're gonna go ahead and place our smoked bacon. We have our pumpkin seeds. So I can say, yes, this is probably, if you, if you think about it, this is almost like a, a Canadian dish, yeah? French Canadian. Yeah? We have our couton. And then we have our fresh herbs. So here we have our fresh cut chive. We wanna put enough on there. And then we finish this off with uh, extra virgin olive oil. And voila, this is our beautiful seasonal pumpkin soup with uh, maple cream, smoked bacon. And this is actually uh, very delicious. Okay, so moving on. So moving on, we're gonna be doing a dish now, uh, we're gonna be doing a sea bass dish. So of course we have a, a, a nice sea bass here. So this is a fillet, so this is boneless. And what we're gonna be serving, so we have a sea bass fillet, usually about 150 grams. And here we have bacalao. Now this is actually Portuguese. So this is basically salted cod cake with potatoes. So it's mashed potatoes with salted cod, a little bit of butter, salt, pepper, and hot milk, okay? So how we prepare this is we actually take the salted cod and we simmer it in milk. And what this does is it just draws out the salt, but you, you want to actually soak the bacala overnight to rid of salt. Then you would cook it in milk until it starts to fall apart. 
and then you would fold it in the mashed potato. What we do is we bread it, we mold it, bread it, and what we do, we like bacon here uh, at the university, so we put a lot of bacon on our food. Uh, I don't call it bacon, I call it candy. So uh, we like bacon, don't we? Yes. So we wrapped it in bacon and we breaded it. So we breaded it, then we wrapped it in bacon, I'm sorry. So the ingredients that we have here, we have a Mediterranean uh, gremolata. Now you say Mediterranean, what is Mediterranean? Well, Mediterranean is an ocean, right? It's an ocean. And <laughs> any, any place that the Mediterranean ocean touches, that is considered Mediterranean. So this is a Mediterranean gremolata. So, um, so chef, yes. you know, why don't we go over the ingredients that we use for our gremolata? All right. So we have a very nice uh, sun-dried tomato. Then we have, pine, it up. we have a pine nut. It's been toasted in the oven. So also we have a fried garlic. Deep fried garlic. Deep fried garlic, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, very nice sliced chive. We have some fried, uh, fried capos. It's look like flowers. It's very nice. And also we have a blanched cherry tomato that is skin off. So why do we take the skin off? Uh, it's a texture because of the texture. If you have a skin on, skin on, sometimes it might start in your teeth. It's not good for the and it creates more flavor experience. Yeah, very nice flavor. And also we have a very nice uh, and uh, aroma flavor is very good. Uh, garlic oil. So this garlic oil is actually we save it when we fry the garlic. So we use the garlic oil as well. And also we have uh, blanched Brussels sprout leaf. This is as a garnish, one part of the garnish. Also, uh, for our sauce, it's a very nice roasted paprika and uh, tomato puli. Of course, we will add a little bit of the ginger juice inside, bring out the flavors, and we add cream it up. And we have some rosemary and some butter. It's for the basting. So this is all the ingredients that we're using for today's for this dish. And I think this dish is not heavy. It's, it's quite light, but filling. So it's very important. Uh, not to be, when you eat, sometimes it's difficult for me. I like to eat to get full, but uh, normally, I mean, this is, when you eat this dish, it's just the perfect amount. So we, we, when we make the menu, you want the right amount of fish, because of course, when you cook the fish, it's going to decrease in volume and you need the right amount of the bakala so that you have enough protein. Right? All right, let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do, we're gonna go ahead and get the gremolata all set up. That's our part of our garnish. So we're gonna mix everything together. And while Sushef is doing that right here, we, we prepared a kuli. So a kuli is a very elegant sauce made from pureed veg. So what we've done here, we have yellow capsicum. So yellow bell peppers that have been roasted uh, and then the skin removed. And what we have done is we have tomato confit. So confit means to cook in fat. So we have tomatoes cooked in olive oil that is actually roasted in the oven. And uh, that's actually roasted for what? We do that 30 minutes, yeah? Yes. 30 minutes, we take the skin off, which has been seasoned with a lot of herb and seasoning. What we have done is we placed the bell peppers with the tomatoes and puree. You get that nice roasted flavor. and. A little twist on this, we're going to add a little bit of ginger. Yes. So that way, when you eat it, you're like, I don't know what that flavor is, but I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. So that will be the ginger. That's adding a little bit of the acid. So while Sous Chef is doing this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sear. I think we have a problem here. Um, this doesn't want to go on the induction. So we need to change the pan, please. So uh, this is not induction. This is not made for induction. So we're going to get a regular pan. This one is made for induction. Beautiful. What we're going to do now is the first thing we're getting ready, we're going to start to garnish first. So the sea bass is going to take at least five minutes, five to six minutes to cook until the internal temperature is at least 150 or 60 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna place this, the bacalao, we're gonna actually deep fry this. So we can go and deep fry it. We're gonna deep fry this for approximately three minutes. We're gonna wait until the pan is hot. 
Okay. So when the pan starts smoking, that's when you know that the pan is hot and you can actually introduce the fish. So what we're going to do is we're going to season with a little bit of salt. Salt and pepper. So we season also the seasoning tray. And we need some pepper. So sous chef, sous chef can we grab some white pepper, please? So you can see now, you see that smoke? And white fish, white pepper. So we have a little bit of white pepper. And we're going to season on the plate so that way we can just soap it up. Now, when you're searing, you always want to place the presentation side down first. So that's the most beautiful side first. So we're going to go ahead and place that down and we have a little weight and we're going to place that right on top what this does is creates a nice even surface and nice color and you want to cook it nice and slow you don't want to rush it and at the same time what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our we're going to place this inside. This is our garnish. This is our uh, Brussels sprouts. We're going to place this in a uh, little bit of chicken stock, butter, and cornstarch. And very important, you want to keep everything nice and clean. This is keeping warm here. And we're going to go ahead and heat up our coolie. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So, how is the bacalao? Bacalao is frying now in the deep fryer. You need some time. All right. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take a peek. We're going to take a peek. Now, remember, if it's stuck, that means it's not cooked enough. Wow, that is unbelievable. Amazing. So, you want to make sure that it's under the oil. So I want a little bit more color. I want a little bit more color. I'm going to weigh it down. I'm going to cook it just a little bit more. Now, again, uh, when, you, when you do come to school here, you also learn fish cookery, fish and seafood cookery. You also learn uh, poultry and also meat as well. So you're going to learn that the first year you're here. So very important. We give you all the skills necessary to become a professional. Now that is absolutely beautiful. I still want just a little bit more color. We'll make sure everything is nice and clean. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in the oven and we're gonna finish cooking in the oven once I flip it over. So start to finish, sea bass is gonna take at least six minutes. So three minutes, approximately three minutes on top of the uh, burner and then flip it over three minutes in the oven. Now, look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. Look at that color. Mm -mm -mm. Place that in the oven. And of course, in Chopin and at Wusong University, we have all of the latest and nice equipment as well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna heat these up. Um, I don't think this is going to work, Jim. Uh, it might work. Well, let's just check. So we're going to go ahead and heat this up real quick. So, sous chef, go ahead and heat that up. So, what we're going to do, we're going to add to the coolie, we're going to add a little bit of ginger, ginger juice. Okay. 
Uh, you don't want too much. You just want to be able to you taste that. We add a little bit of cream. We're going to mix that up. Uh, we we're going to put this on induction, but this pan is very small. It doesn't work. So uh, number one, it thickens up the chicken stock, of course. And number two, it's very important. It gives a nice glaze. You see that nice shine? That's very important. Just enhances the flavor and the look and the appearance. Beautiful. All right, sous chef, yeah. So here we have the nice coolie. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and place that. This is the base. So you guys can see. And we just give it a nice little spin. I'm gonna spin it too much. Now to this, to give it another dimension, what we're gonna do is we have a parsnip puree. So parsnip, very, it's also seasonal. Yeah, this is the season. This is the season. So uh, it's very nice. It's a, a parsnip. If you don't know what it is, it tastes kind of like celery root. Or it's kind of slightly sweet, but it looks like a white carrot. Do we have a do we have one that we can show? Uh, yes. so we're going to let you show. It's kind of. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's quite nice. I was just show you. <laughs> so we're going to put seven seven dollops here so we're going to place one two three four five six and seven beautiful this is a past new i will yeah. go too near to the food because it's a little bit uh, dusty in here it's from the gardens so it's yeah. very nice it's a little bit ugly but it tastes delicious I think that's the ugliest one I've ever seen, actually. <laughs> I've never seen it that ugly. But yeah, but they're very delicious. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we have the nice Brussels sprouts. So again, this adds contrast. Is the uh, bass in the oven? Sorry if I'm shaking a little bit. And now we have our bacalao. So we have that. So now we're gonna place our gremolata. We're gonna place it kind of in between. And you want that nice, that nice bit of contrast. And this is actually a new menu item. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, amazing. Well, now we have a chive. Now we're going to put this on top of the parsnip puree. So again, this is a little bit more advanced. So this we would learn actually in the uh, university restaurant. So this is more advanced cookery. My chive doesn't want to come off. So let's keep sticking. You see that? He doesn't want to let go. We'll just leave it off. 
We'll just leave it up. All right, beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the bacalao. See that beautiful color in the bacon? Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. We're gonna place this right on the side, okay? Beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're going to baste it. So sous chef will do that. We're going to add a little bit of rosemary and some butter. So you get that nice rosemary aroma. And very important, always keep clean. This is called mise en place, meaning to prepare from start to finish. So you wanna have everything ready to cook, all your ingredients and everything ready before you cook. Beautiful. Take off the rosemary. And we're gonna go ahead and lay, we're gonna lay that, oh, that smells absolutely amazing. Huh? We're gonna lay that bass right on top. Look at that, that is absolutely beautiful. We have some uh, extra virgin olive oil here. We have extra virgin, this is garlic oil. Is it okay, extra virgin? Just add a little extra virgin here. Look at that, that is absolutely beautiful. Yes. Question. Yeah, Someone sure. Is asking, what is the substitute for parsnip puree? Oh, parsnip puree, uh, you can actually just use mashed potatoes. So if you don't have parchment, parsnip puree, excuse me, you can use uh, mashed potato, you can use any other type of puree, maybe carrot puree. Carrot puree is actually quite nice. You know, the contrast and the color is nice. Cauliflower puree, thank you, sous chef. Cauliflower is another one. Uh, you would just cook it the same way. You add a little bit of milk, some butter, uh, cook the cauliflower until it's well done and place it in a blender and puree it. So anything that you like, anything that's available. So yeah, actually cauliflower puree would work really well. It's, it's also uh, winter vegetables. Yes, it's also in season. Very good. And also carrot as well because it's readily available. It's everywhere. So there you go. So this is the uh, sea bass with the bacalao and house smoked bacon. So the next dish that we're gonna be showing you is the grilled beef tenderloin. Now the beef that we use is USDA, uh, actually this one was USDA choice and prime. So we use prime and choice here. Yes. Yes. So where's the dish? Oh, dish is here, yes, yes, mini dishes. Okay, let's put it out here. Does that look beautiful or what? Fantastic. Okay, we're assembling it for you guys to see. Great. Okay, now, Susha, yes. can you tell us a little bit about this dish? Uh, all right, this is a, uh, this is, we did it in, uh, like a few months ago, mm -hmm. two months ago. So it's very popular. And also it's very refreshing because the flavors of this dish is like uh, they have bitterness, they have the freshness from the knife, arugulas, and also they have the sweetness from the grapes, you know, and the softness from the tomatoes, and also the tanginess from the cuchis mousse. Right. And also savory flavor from the prosciutto that's very balanced dishes. So this is winter salad. Right? Oh yes, it is. This is winter salad, and we have this beautifully made. Pumpkin soup. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can I tilt it a little bit? I hope I'm not gonna be. Not gonna so this it. is the pumpkin mm -hmm. soup is actually made. Of course, you're gonna learn this your first year. So mm -hmm. it's basically made by a, a velute. So you have right. a base velute plus the pumpkin puree mixed together with seasoning. Right. So um, you said earlier that in order to be able to do this, yeah. uh, the students have to learn at least two years. Uh, you need the prerequisites. So the prerequisites, you need to know your knife skills. So you go through your knives, 
knife skills, also your soups or your stocks. I'm sorry. You have to learn how to do your stocks, what type of stocks, white stocks, brown stocks, what have you, uh, vegetable stocks. Then you go on to uh, meat and seafood cookery, uh, right. uh, poultry cookery, right. uh, gamoge, where you learn cold, uh, cold kitchen. So this is all you, this is all you're going to happen in your first year here. Great. So just to let you know, Usom does have bachelor programs and associate degree programs for two years. Depending on your future plans, you might want to talk to us about which program might be suitable for you. If you see in the chat box, we will drop you a link, lists of people that you can contact if you have questions about coming to Usong University into the culinary arts program. Now, if you have additional questions, I know this is not probably enough time for all of you to meet us, but this is not goodbye. Feel free to reach out to us, email us about anything, questions about requirements, or probably what are the things that you want to know from the program. Additionally, we're open for spring 2022 admission and fall 2022 admission for both bachelor and associate degrees program. Thank you so much for joining us today with Chef James and Chu Chef Chun. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be able to see you right here in South Korea in the culinary arts program. Thank you so much for Chef James and Thank you. Chef. I hope um, you all enjoyed. Right. These all look very delicious. And remember what they're able to create today, today you can do it too. Join us and see you soon. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you. See you.